I understand both what you where you're coming from, where basically I the adaptability of it, where even though adaptable is kind of 0.7 here, but the fact that you're thinking way outside of the box is a great scrum master. Uh, while Adam, I think, just goes a good scrum master is the average, and here's what uh, companies expect from the average. So just going above the average, you do these seven points, and then you're just that better, that much better. What happens when a meticulous agile coach and a scrum master still learning the ropes get an AI assistant? Well, the AI still hasn't figured out how to make their coffee. It's the Ways of Agile podcast with Andre Glieger, who's passionate enough about agile to make up for his lack of humor, and Vlad Skripnik, who's got more scrum ceremonies than social engagements. Let's dive into the agile world where process meets pandemonium. Hi, everyone. Hi, follower. Hi, Vlad. Hello. So uh, basically, this is part three, uh, without actually calling it part three, but this is part three of asking Adam, our our AI assistant, some questions which you may encounter in a Scrum Master interview and just seeing how Adam replies to it and kind of measuring if we feel like it's accurate or not based off our experience. So I think we can dive straight into this one. Uh, if you want to view the previous episode, we're going to put the links somewhere. Somewhere okay. there. Somewhere there. So let's, uh, let's dive straight into this one. Basically, this is a question that I know Vlad had to answer like <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. And then I, 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 I kind of enjoyed it and I enjoyed Vlad's answer at the time. So I had my own different answer, but this is, this is one of those questions where you cannot have uh, yes, this is 100% accurate. So this is super opinion based and you'll see it. So question is, what is the difference between a good scrum master and a great scrum master? So let's see what Adam thinks. Ah, uh, the difference between good and great, the eternal conundrum. It's a bit like the difference between a crumpet and a scone. They both fulfill a similar role, but a scone with clotted cream and strawberry jam just elevates the tea time experience, doesn't it? Now enough with my British culinary analogies. Let's talk about scrum masters. A good scrum master might tick off the following boxes. One, knowledgeable. They know the rules of scrum and ensure that they are followed. Two, facilitator. They organize and facilitate the scrum ceremonies and ensure clear communication among team members. Three, impediment. Remover. They actively identify and eliminate obstacles that could impede the team's progress. Four, servant leader. They serve the team and help them to be self-sufficient now, what does a great Scrum Master do that makes them truly stand out? 1. Mastery of Agile Principles They don't just know the rules of Scrum, they deeply understand the principles of Agile and can adapt them to fit the needs of the team and the organization. They can effectively explain and promote these principles to others. 2. Skilled Facilitator and Coach They don't just facilitate ceremonies and communication, they actively coach the team and the wider organization on Agile practices helping everyone to improve and grow. Three, proactive problem solver. They don't just remove impediments, they actively work to prevent them, foreseeing issues and risks and addressing them before they become problems. Four, champion of high performance. They continually challenge and inspire the team to reach new levels of performance and maturity, always promoting a culture of continuous improvement. Five, empathetic listener and team advocate. They create a safe and trusting environment where team members feel heard and supported. They advocate for the team and its needs within the wider organization. 6. Influential change agent. They have a strong influence on the culture of the organization, promoting agile transformations beyond the confines of their team and helping to break down silo mentalities. 7. Adaptable. They are able to navigate and thrive in a changing environment, leading the team through uncertainty and promoting adaptability and resilience. In essence, while a good Scrum Master executes their role effectively, a great Scrum Master transforms their team and organization. They make a lasting, positive impact that goes beyond the day-to-day -day mechanics of Scrum. However, do remember to keep the scones and crumpets balanced. Focusing on being great shouldn't mean neglecting the good. 
It's a journey of continual improvement, so savour each bite, or rather each step along the way. I want to hear your opinions first. Vlad, yeah, fair. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll share mine after. So it's more in-depth than my answer was when I had the interview a while ago. Uh, my, my, I guess, go-to is one thing that a great scrum master does that a good one doesn't most likely is try to make yourself obsolete by just trying to get the, the team to the, the, the hypothetical situation where you're no longer needed. And secondly, you're not just foc focusing on Scrum, you're focusing on the wider agile principles, methodologies. You might customize uh, certain aspects of bring a little bit of Kanban, a little bit of XP, a little bit of whatever is needed in your organization and team in order to basically get their efficiency where it needs to be and get uh, customize their I guess the framework to their needs. Uh, the interviewer liked that answer back then, but this I do like. If I had this answer kind of in front of me, I would have uh, read, read reading this a day or the, a few hours before I had the interview. I think I, yeah, I would have uh, gone the, the extra mile. I like, I really like the uh, the the depth and the metaphors and the jokes that, that he used, the crumpets and the scones. It's uh, I like the delivery uh, especially, but going straight just to the actual technical aspect of it, I do like it. I do. I don't know. In in some regards, some of them I may have thought that they are just a good scrum master, but I guess the main difference between a good scrum master and a great scrum master is the rarity. If if everybody were to do the seven points that a great scrum master would do, they would no longer be what a great scrum master is. They, they would be just the average. They would be the good scrum master. Something else would be for great. So it's even though I myself think that I may have had it in my head that some of the seven points that he mentioned for great scrum master is something that I would have tried to do to begin with. It's just about how do you compare with the average or to, to the rest of the, I guess, scrum master the organization has and in the industry? And it's a long answer there, but I think. Yeah, I, I think I see what you're saying, basically. So I'm actually going to go the other way for this one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not super happy with what ChatGPT provided as an answer. Because, I mean, I would give a different answer. And from everything that Adam said, I honestly, the, the best thing I think that said was at the end where he said, in essence, while a good scrum master executes their role effectively, a great scrum master transforms their team and organization. So... I think it's a lot difficult to understand what great and good is. So what Adam has done, Adam has measured, uh, let's say, because he put facilitator for Scrum Master, but he put skilled facilitator for great Scrum Master. So good Scrum Master is just a facilitator or knows how to facilitate, but he put skilled facilitator as a great Scrum Master. Now, just necessarily improving that skill doesn't make you great and leaning too much on having i don't know those seven pillars or those 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 seven metrics that you can use may lead you to being to i mean to to want to pursue something that may not be right so whenever like if i were to be asked this question was the difference between a good scrum master and a great scrum master. I would rather go for an answer like that. I, I'm not sure that uh, when we had this conversation, I think I said something like along the lines of a good scrum master knows what the team's problems are within a few weeks of joining them. And a great scrum master doesn't. Yeah. And because th th this may seem a bit counterintuitive, but the truth is that 
a, a great scrum master is is a mentality almost is don't jump to conclusions yeah a good scrum master may know what he's doing or what she's doing and they may they may look oh we have a toolbox and they may say okay let me take out this tool and fix this and they have a pre predefinite set of tools and when to use them and that's great and it's nice to have a lot of tools but at the same time someone who's great will uh, come in will understand that perhaps his or her tools are not needed or are not as functional for this company or for this team as they were in the past so that great scrum master would be able to almost create or manufacture their own tools on the fly as it happens so i think that's that's my long answer basically no fair enough i, I get it i get, yeah i guess i understand both what you where you're coming from where basically i the adaptability of it where even though adaptable is kind of 0.7 here but yeah. the fact that you're thinking way outside of the box is a great scrum master uh while Adam, I think, just goes, a good Scrum Master is the average, and here's what uh, companies expect from the average. So just going above the average, you do these seven points, and then you're just that yeah. better, yeah. that much better. I mean, because I would put proactive problem solver as a good Scrum Master, because that's what you're doing. That should be your role. Like You should be uh, managing uh, blockers, problems, and proactively try to solve them. So I would actually put that as a good Scrum Master. And now, if you were to put skilled in front of that, that doesn't make you a, a great or yeah an amazing scrum master. So that's that's why I I want to stay away from these types of metrics. Fair enough. No, I understand. Although to to kind of take the or the devil's advocate, or in this case Adam's advocate, um, do you think that the average scrum master is a proactive problem solver, or do you think that he just should be, or they should be? I think they should be. They, I think, yeah. So. So, <laughs> it's hard to understand again what average Scrum Master is. Cause yeah, I know. You, you, have, you have Master in your name. And Scrum Master, I don't want to get too deep into the rabbit hole, but Scrum Master should be a master at understanding and applying Scrum principles to begin with. Although it's, it's more often than not, it's Agile principles. Yeah. And... Scrum is just the role because I I'm, I'm I'm a Scrum master to some extent while I'm doing Kanban, so yeah, yeah, uh, that, it, that, it's it's more more the label because it's yeah. popular rather than yeah. the strict role. So I think by average, once you become a Scrum master, you should be one of those people who proactively try to solve problems who perhaps is leaving and breathing the agile principles, who is trying to uh, improve transparency, who is trying to improve team morale, who's trying to do all these things proactively. And I, I actually think that should be average. It should be, but that's that's it, kind of... Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the state of agile is, to be honest. So I, I don't really want to assume that is or isn't. Average. The, the way that I guess the closest thing that I think uh, in order for us to be able to judge is going back to one of the previous episodes where we did, where we analyzed job adverts uh, on, on LinkedIn. So by looking at what companies expect from a Scrum Master, you get a sense of what the average Scrum Master is like. So while we can identify a few red flags in, in certain uh, job descriptions, if you see those red flags in quite a few job descriptions, you know that on an industry level, there's something a little bit off in terms of expectations. So that means that some of the yeah. average scrum masters are maybe not. But it's also misused as a role. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I, do know, I do know places where I know friends who are scrum masters, but they're not actually scrum masters. Yeah. So are they average or below average i'm not sure because they're not really doing uh not even i don't know 20 percent of what a scrum master should do but they sure. are doing their job and they're doing their job relatively good 
Yeah. So I, I, I understand. And I, but I, I would just say, regardless if they were average or below average, they do influence the average. If you look on the industry as a whole, almost going at mathematically, they, even if you think that the role, either because of the company or they themselves, their skill set, they do have almost like drag the average down uh, to some extent. Yeah. So yeah. that, I guess that's where I'm coming from. That's where I think that Adam is coming from as well in, in this particular example. Although I do uh, understand and I also especially think that I find your approach very useful to almost, well, like I did in the last episode, create a North Star for yourself. Uh, you'll never reach it, but that's basically the ideal. That's what you should thrive for. Yeah. All right. That, uh, that was more complex than we thought. Yeah, <laughs> we would do in this hopefully episode. useful though. Hopefully useful to our follower. Thank you, follower. <laughs> uh, right. I think on that note, we're going to end it. And uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, follower. Thanks, Andre. And thanks, Adam.